Hello, and welcome to another American Photo Treks post processing video. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Dave Soldano, and this is going to be a, what I hope is a quick video just demonstrating how I use the program Sequator. And this uh, program, this uh, post processing video is done in conjunction with the workshop we just completed this weekend called Stacking and Tracking, where we taught advanced. Milky Way uh, capturing techniques. And this is how we stack uh, photographs after we've captured them in the field. And if you've never watched one of these before, it's real easy. You can follow along with me. Every keystroke I do shows up right here. So whether I'm just clicking a mouse or clicking a particular key, you can follow right along with me. Now, one thing I do in um, but before I use Sequator is I do a little bit of processing of my files before I save them as TIFFs to use them in Sequator. Sequator doesn't uh, read raw files, so you have to save them in a format it reads. I select TIFFs like a lot of people do because it's an uncompressed format and seems to do a better job with them, plus it gives you a larger raw type file to work with once you're done. I used to just save them you know as raw files and then go in after I stacked my files go in and try and do my edits but I found that it there are some things it's just easier to edit as a raw file and there are some things I can do to the file before I save it as a TIFF that helps Sequator do a better job of stacking. So I'll show you what I'm doing right here. So here I've selected my 13 images, and uh, it's a barn out in Colorado. We had beautiful conditions, nice clear uh, sky. I was shot these with the Sony A9 camera and a Sigma 14 millimeter art lens. I shot it at f2.5, and that's just a favorite little f-stop of mine, uh, where the stars, you know, look really good, and there's not a lot of uh, distortion around the edges. 13 seconds because I wanted pinpoint stars so I didn't go too long and I turned up my ISO to ISO 6400. Now good setting but of course 6400 you're going to get noise so that's the purpose of Sequator is to get rid of noise. So here now I'm going to I'm using Bridge to look at my raw files. I'm going to click shift and enter and that's going to select the first file and the last file and then to open them in camera raw all I do is double click it's going to say you sure you want to open 13 files yes I do and so there they are they're all opened in Adobe camera raw now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the pictures I'll go up here where it says film strip select all so that any change I make to this picture will be made to all of them because I want all my files to be uh, as close to being exactly the same as possible. The first thing I'm going to do is what I always do is I'm going to start with my profile and I like for my Milky Way I like either standard or vivid. And vivid makes it pop just a little bit more so I'll go with vivid and then uh, I usually shoot at uh, a white balance of 3900, but here I must have um, not been watching shot of 43, so I'm going to bring that white balance down to yeah around 3950 is kind of a favorite of mine. I just like that color. Maybe add just a little bit of tint. There we go. Now something that I do to help Sequator is I go ahead and up my exposure. This isn't, exa isn't necessarily where I'm going to leave it later. Uh, it's just that if I up my exposure, I've noticed that I'm helping Sequator when it uh, differentiates between the sky and the foreground. So I'll do my highlights just a little bit to make the stars pop, and then bring out my shadows again, just trying to help Sequator do its job. A little bit of clarity to define the Milky Way, and that should be good for this set of uh, adjustments. Now something that I do for all of these files before I make them TIFF files is I do my lens corrections. Remove chromatic aberration, enable profile correction. 
take another look at what that did with the Naval Profile Correction. This lens will give you a lot of vignette. And this takes care of that. And again, that helps Sequator just do a better job when it comes to stacking. Uh, I also, and this is real important as well, if you look closely at these stars here, they have got themselves a pink tint to them, and that comes from chromatic aberration of the lens. And I'm going to go over here to uh, my manual defringe. I'm going to select a little bit more of this purple. Well, it has, it's pretty good. Now I'm going to move that and watch that get rid of that. Oops. Watch that get rid of that purple fringing so that now I've got nice white stars. Four or five is usually all you need. Let me see if I got any other kind of fringing anywhere else. And that looks pretty good. So now that's all I want to do before I save these images as TIFFs. I'll obviously do a lot more post-processing later, but this is just for the TIFF files for Sequator. So now it's time to save images, and to do that you just come down here and click Save Images. You start at the top and move your way down. Save in new location, select folder. In this case I've got TIFF files for Sequator. I'm going to select that folder. I'm going to name them in this case, 04, Red Barn, and oh, I'll start with 03, Red Barn and Milky Way, file extension TIFF, format TIFF, I'll leave it with Adobe RGB and 16 bits per channel, and now I'm ready to save. I keep the image sizing at default. Now I'm going to pause the video here because um, in the past when I've sit, tried to do this save and with the video going, it crashes the video. So I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back once this is done. Okay? Alright, we're back. And so now I've saved all those files as TIFF files. And now it's time to open Sequator. There it is. And now the thing with Sequator. is it makes things pretty easy for you. I mean, it's not the most intuitive program in the world, but if you know what you're doing, it's actually pretty easy to use. You, if the dot on your settings is colored, that means it's something that you have to address. So in this case, you start at the top with star images, okay? And here, all you're doing is selecting your, the images that you want Sequator to stack. So you do it the same way, you click the first one, and then you click the last one, and click Open. And there you can see it opened all of those files, and those are the files that it's going to use to stack. Now, base image has turned blue. That means you should address this. It defaults to a base image, but I'm going to select a different one because Base images, it says this is the image I'm going to make my output file look like. And there was a lot of clouds moving through the sky, so I'm going to see if I can find one that had the clouds better. And in this case, uh, let's go down to number eight. These clouds are just better than that other, so I'm going to say OK. There we go. So this is going to be my base image. Now, noise image and vin vignette image, those aren't uh, colored, so you don't have to address them. If you did take noise images, which, in other words, every time you took a picture, you then took a uh, picture with the lens cap on and made it completely black to help it uh, get rid of noise, you could load those images now. But just doing terrestrial images of Milky Way, don't really need to worry about it. Same with vignette images. But you do need to worry about output file. So double-click that. And now you're going to have to give a name for your output file. In this case, I'm going to call mine Red Barn and Milky Way Stacked. And I'll say dash one. Save. There you go. Now I'll move down to the next thing, Composition Align Stars. 
And here, make sure align stars is checked, not trails. You could use this for star trails. Computing op options, I always leave it at accumulation. And this one is real important. You have to select freeze ground. When you do, you got to make sure there's a check mark in your selected box. Now, move down to sky region. And if you've checked a regular mask like it should be checked, it's now going to give you a paintbrush. What I want you to do with that paintbrush is paint the sky area of your picture. It's real easy to use. You hold down the left mouse button to paint the sky, roll the wheel to change the size of the sky. The great thing about Sequator is you do not have to be real precise on where the sky stops and the foreground starts. You just have to give it a general idea. In fact, being too precise can cause problems where the uh, foreground kind of streaks into the sky. Now if you make a mistake and you actually get a little bit of your foreground here, I'll do that on purpose, just hold the right mouse button and that erases the mask. Okay, and there, now you're, that's, that's as uh, precise as you have to be. No, you don't have to be any more precise than that. So now, the next one is reduce distortion effects. Auto, I leave it at auto, seems to work. And now it's time to hit start. And once again, uh, I've just noticed that sometimes uh, things can crash and act kind of funny if I, um, hit start while the video is running. So I'm going to pause the video and then we'll come back when this is done. Okay? All right, we're back. Sequator has successfully stacked all that images and we know that because it says right there, completed successfully. So now we just click close and there it shows you your final image. And that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Again, it used that image number eight. It didn't have that cloud over here. So this image doesn't have the cloud. And those, all the pictures had some clouds over here, so it handled that sort of like a long exposure where that's streaked just a little bit. So that is our stacked image. So there's the question now, did it get rid of the noise like we hope so? So to do that, I'm going to close this out. And I've loaded on here in Photoshop both the, my final stacked image and a, um, an image before it was stacked. And let's take a close look, like right about here. This is the image before it was stacked. And if you look, there's, even though this is a pretty good camera for noise, there's quite a bit of noise there. Underneath it is the stacked image, and just look at the difference. See how that noise has just disappeared? It's almost like you took it at ISO, what, 800? I mean, that is nice. And even though you separate what's the ground from the sky, it does a great job at removing the noise from the foreground and the sky. Isn't that awesome? So now you can take Milky Way images with pinpoint stars and low noise. And that's Sequator. All right, thank you very much for tuning in, and uh, I'll see you again with another American Photo Trucks post-processing video, or you can go to AmericanPhototrucks.com and join us for uh, one of our workshops. We have a good time. We're in Colorado and uh, Utah and Wyoming and all over the place, and it's always a good time, and we always learn something new. All right, thanks, everybody. Have a good one.